The catching battle in Boston continues to get interesting as Reese McGuire had a big series in L.A. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate, and also currently the host of the Boston Balling Podcast. And I am here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed for free. And honestly, what's not to love about that, right? We all love things that are free. So might as well start your day off right by tuning into Locked On Red Sox. Locked On is your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Red Sox, where we are here every day talking all things Boston Red Sox. And right now, it's been good things to talk about with this Boston Red Sox team as they have been off to a better start than I think people anticipated. Seven and three after finally finishing what seemed like it was such a long trip on the West Coast and There were definitely mixed feelings about the Red Sox starting the season on the West Coast. Part of me was saying it's great that they're getting this trip over with early on before they start to get fatigued and then they have to do all this traveling and play some of these West Coast teams and start the games really late. But the other part of me was saying this could really set the tone for how the season goes because when a team plays on the West Coast, it's already challenging enough in itself with the time zone and having to adjust to that time difference. So that alone is hard. So if you're starting your season that way and the series that you're playing doesn't go well, then it's harder to recover from that. So going into this West Coast trip, I said it's really important that the Red Sox start the season off strong and that they can succeed on this road trip. And as a result, they did exactly what they needed to do in Oakland and took all three games from them. They split a series with a Mariners team that has great pitching overall. That was a very competitive series, and the Red Sox were able to match that level that we saw out of Seattle, and that's very promising. And then they took two of three from the Angels. One game in that series was very frustrating. Some defensive miscues and a lack of offensive productivity led to the loss on Saturday night just three hits total for the Boston Red Sox in the game and then a couple key blunders defensively that ultimately caused the Red Sox to not win that game but then they came back on Sunday in a completely opposite offensive showing and won 12 to 2 which is actually crazy because they went from three hits on Saturday to 12 total hits as a team on Sunday. And a big part of that and a big storyline so far this season is Reese McGuire because the Red Sox catching situation is very interesting right now because Kyle Teal is waiting in the rafters starting the season in double A, which by the way, if you haven't looked at the Portland Sea Dogs roster, You absolutely should. That team is stacked with players like Roman Anthony, Marcelo Meyer, and Kyle Teal all down there. I'm so excited to see how that team performs this year. But so he's in the rafters, going to continue to develop and eventually get called up to Boston. He probably won't spend this whole entire season in double A. He'll likely get his chance to be called up to triple A at some point this year. So what does that mean for the Red Sox current catchers and Reese McGuire and Connor Wong? Obviously, when Kyle Teal does come up, they're not going to have three catchers on the roster. They're going to stick with two catchers on the roster. And the question becomes, which one of those two catchers is it? Do they keep Wong, who has a cannon for an arm and is constantly throwing out 
potential base stealers and somebody who is a very good defensive catcher but has been very wishy-washy on offense or do they keep somebody like Reese McGuire who's been absolutely hot at the plate and his defense has improved a little bit this year too so right now if you look at the scope of things from this small portion of the season so far the obvious answer is Reese McGuire he's been off to a very hot start at the plate especially he's hitting 333 right now with two home runs eight RBIs and three runs scored he also has an OPS of 1.010 in Sunday's game against the Angels he went two for four with a home run Drove in a career-high five runs, scored a run himself, drew a walk, and stole a base. Fun fact about Reese, because that doesn't happen very often where you see him steal a base. But he got a very good jump, and there wasn't even an attempt to throw him out because he had already gotten there. He just got a very good jump to begin with, so he had that base stolen. So... It was a great day for him, great day for the Red Sox offense in general, but he's been cruising. He had a very strong series in Oakland and looked good in Seattle too. He got a couple big hits when the Red Sox needed somebody to come in clutch in Oakland, and then that carried over into the series in Anaheim. So I'm very impressed by what I've seen so far from Reese, and I really truly feel like there was a little bit of foreshadowing from this last year i did do an episode on the show where i talked about reese's productivity last year and how he contributed offensively to this red sox team and i said you know if reese mcguire is our backup catcher he's really not a bad option for a backup catcher i mean his numbers offensively were not anything like they are right now in the start to this season but they were good and he was making contact and he was getting himself on base. And that's something that's so important for an offense that is being really relied upon like the Red Sox offenses, because you take the pitchers and there were a lot of question marks surrounding the pitching staff going into this season, which they are completely offsetting a lot of those question marks right now. They've been pitching very well overall as a pitching staff so far. They actually have the lowest ERA in baseball right now as a team, which is awesome. And I don't think anybody would have thought that. Again, small sample size, only 10 games into the season, but it's still very promising and because of the fact that going into the season, the pitching staff had a lot of question marks, the offense really needed to step up. And in that offense, you have players that you know are going to hit, like Rafael Devers, who went deep again on Sunday, Tristan Casas, Jaron Duran, who, by the way, has had another fantastic start to the season this year. I mean, that kid's special with his speed, with his athletic ability in all facets of the game. He plays good defense. He can hit. We have a special one in Jaron Duran. And then Tyler O'Neill, who has been off to a great start in Boston. But you have to think about other guys on this roster who have to contribute offensively to the bigger picture in the grand scheme of things. And Reese McGuire is somebody who has done just that and is hitting better than a lot of the other guys in the lineup right now. And if that can continue for him, then... It's safe to say that he could very easily solidify that roster spot as that second catcher on the team when Kyle Teal comes up. Now, again, his batting average right now at 333, that's very hard to maintain. He's going to come back down to earth eventually, probably struggle a little bit, and won't be as hot as he is now all season long. But if he can show a semblance of that all season long, then the Red Sox are in a very good position because when I was looking at players who were going to contribute the most in the Red Sox lineup this year, Reese McGuire was not one of the players I would have put towards the top as a player who was going to make an impact in that way as much. And so if he does, and the Red Sox are adding another player who can be very successful at the plate, I mean watch out league I mean I love this team's energy these guys are fired up they want to win they get very mad at themselves when they make mistakes and the coolest thing about Reese for me is he really was not throwing out a lot of base stealers last year he was 
having throws that were not always on target, weren't fast enough, weren't strong enough. And Connor Wong was really the one racking up those numbers in terms of cutting down base runners. But Reese McGuire has made a couple very nice throws down to second base to catch base stealers in the act this year. And that's huge. That's a huge step forward for him in his defensive aspect of the game. And that's something I've seriously picked up on from him too this year. So very hot start to the season for him. Great day on Sunday against the Angels. He certainly was the biggest storyline of that game carrying the Red Sox offense significantly. Lots of guys did show up offensively, but between his three-run home run that he ripped in the game and then also driving in a couple runs, it was absolutely a huge day for him at the plate because the Red Sox need that. They need somebody like him to continue to step up. Went two for four with that three-run home run and then drove in a couple other runs as well so good day for Reese glad that we were able to see him have a hot start to the season hopefully it helps with his confidence moving forward and he's able to be able to contribute the rest of the season maybe not to that same extent but hopefully he doesn't fall off too much because that would be huge for this Red Sox team Coming up, I'm going to be talking about a player who is having a bit of a concerning start to the season, and I'm really hoping he gets going soon, because if so, that could be a game changer for Boston. If you're looking for a fun way to play daily fantasy sports, Prize Picks is the place for you. Prize Picks has something for every sports fan, from baseball and basketball to League of Legends and everything in between. You can pick LeBron, Shohei Otani, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham, all in the same entry. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 if you use the code LOCKEDONMLB. Pick more, pick less, it's that easy. When they say it's that easy, it really is. So you should absolutely head to Prize Picks today. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's so exciting for Locked On because we are the only network that has this. So head to Locked On Sports Today. One player for the Boston Red Sox heading into the season who had some high expectations placed on him, was Masataka Yoshida. He went into this season with a big target on his back due to the fact that he started off with an absolute bang when he got to Boston. I mean, he came over from the Japanese League as a very strong prospect that the Red Sox were excited to commit to and sign to a multi-year deal, especially because of his power and his ability to hit very effectively over in Japan. His defense was not so much of a hyped up part of his game. And the Red Sox knew this going in. And they gave him a chance in the outfield last year and he struggled significantly on defense. Did have one of the worst ratings in baseball defensively. So that was tough to watch as a Red Sox fan. And now going into this year, when the Red Sox were determined to fix their defense overall, They made the decision to have Yoshida not really play defense and primarily play DH, which is a great move for Boston because he was a liability defensively. And now that they have Tyler O'Neill, Jaron Duran, and Sadam Rafaela, and Willier Abreu 
to an extent, all of which have made some very nice plays in the outfield this year and are showing their potential. It doesn't make sense to force Yoshida to play in the outfield if he doesn't need to, especially because it's an area of struggle for him. So that's something that the Red Sox definitely did correctly was decide to have him primarily focus on being a designated hitter and get reps in that way. But he hasn't fully gotten going at the plate yet, and I'm hoping that that can change a little bit. He has a 242 average right now, as well as the fact that over 33 at-bats that he's taken, he's gotten eight hits, two of them being doubles, no home runs yet, and he's only recorded three RBIs. He's walked four times and recorded six strikeouts. Small sample size still. I mean, 33 at-bats in the grand scheme of things is really not a lot. But one big thing that I've noticed about Yoshida recently is that he's lost some of his plate discipline. When he came into Boston, his plate discipline was very good, and it was something that served him very well in Japan on top of the fact that he could hit for power. He ran a walk rate higher than his strikeout rate in five of his seven seasons in Japan, posting a 176 WRC plus during his career in his home country. In his final year in NPB, he had the second lowest strikeout rate and second highest walk rate among qualified batters. That shows that he was very patient at the plate and he was willing to take his walks. And that transition from the Asian leagues to the majors can be difficult. And typically it is more difficult for batters than for pitchers, primarily high velocity being a big concern and also the quality of breaking and off-speed pitches that hitters are seeing is much higher as well. So for Yoshida coming in, it seemed like his pitch recognition skills would help him overcome the common problems of seeing more challenging off-speed pitches in the majors. But the problem is that he's declined in that area. He wasn't able to reach the heights of his career in Japan, but he did manage to record a 109 WRC plus in his first major league season in Boston even though his .6 WAR was definitely lower than the Red Sox were expecting when they signed him to that contract. His biggest thing was that his approach at the plate seemed to worsen as the season went on, which I hate to say, but that's kind of carried over into this year. His last couple months at the plate were a significant struggle last year, and that was a mix of a couple different things. One, because of what I mentioned, how typically players are seeing a higher volume and higher difficulty level of off-speed pitches in the majors than what he was used to in the Japanese league. So part of it to me was adjusting to that it because he was struggling to hit pitches that weren't fastballs, but also because he almost felt like he had to compensate because he was starting to struggle at the plate. And that was tough to watch. I mean, because through the first few months of the season, everything seemed like it was working out for him. He was posting that 129 WRC plus with an 8.7% walk rate and an 11.3% strikeout rate. The plate discipline looked like it had made the transition pretty easily and he was hitting for some power at that point. But then when things started to take a turn, it just completely dragged his overall stat line down a lot. And when you take a look at his rolling strikeout and walk rates during the season and how much those numbers fluctuated, it goes to show that he stopped approaching his at-bats in the same way that he was before. From July 1st through the end of the season last year, he only took seven walks, and his strikeout rate jumped to 17%. He continued to produce in July, even though he was starting to lose some of that plate discipline, but 
everything really crashed and burned in the last two months when he slashed a stat line of a 257 batting average, 276 on base percentage, and 371 slugging. So the thing with batters sometimes, if if something's working for them early on and then it stops working for them, they don't know how to adjust to that. And that's what it seems like it is with Yoshida is when he started to struggle to hit some of those off-speed pitches, he panicked. So he started to lose his identity at the plate. And the problem is that he wasn't taking as many walks and he was getting a lot more swings and misses. So when you break down his numbers, really, from 2023, after July 1st, he walked 2.6% of the time. Before July 1st, he walked 8.7% of the time. Before July 1st, he struck out 11.3% of the time. And after that, he struck out 17.0% of the time. It's a significant leap. And in 2024, so far, over 33 at-bats having four walks and six strikeouts. I mean, not the greatest. Obviously, six strikeouts could be a lot worse. But... He should be taking more walks. That's Yoshida's way of succeeding in baseball. And he's not being as patient at the plate. So I really would like to see him bring back that patience and be able to put together some competitive at-bats. Even if he's recording an out, but he's running a pitcher's pitch count and he's making them tired and he's generating some good swings That's a great step in the right direction towards getting back to where he wants to be because when he's swinging and missing a lot more and he's not taking his walks, he's then not able to connect at the plate and find success where he wants to and make contact where he wants to. So that's a big thing that screams out to me this is a problem for Yoshida. So moving forward this season, he needs to be more aware of that stay calm and stay patient. Your pitch is there. It's just a matter of finding it and not forcing things that aren't there. So if he can get back into his way of doing things and being willing to take walks when necessary, he could be successful again this year. And the Red Sox are going to need him to be successful this year if they want to feel good about that contract because this is a big season for him. Had his rookie year There's no longer the excuse of him being new to the league because he has a full 162-game season under his belt. Now he needs to perform. And if he doesn't perform, that's tough for the Red Sox to make up for in the lineup. So hopefully he's able to put things together over these next couple months and that he can find his way back to where he was before. Maybe being back at Fenway in a familiar territory will help him out with that. I'm hoping so, but time will tell. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about some defensive blunders the Red Sox had in this series against the Angels and what they can do to fix it. If you're ever looking for last-minute tickets for anything at a very good price, Game Time will have you covered. I've actually used it multiple times for UConn basketball games, Red Sox tickets, concerts, Celtics tickets, you name it. What I love about Game Time is is that their prices are always very good compared to other ticket vendors. They give you the best prices and they show you the view from your seat so that you don't have to worry about feeling like you're going to have a bad view. So you feel comforted before you purchase your tickets knowing that you have a nice view of whatever it is you're going to see. So that's the best thing about game time. And it really does save you money. Last minute tickets, you can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, or whatever it is you're looking for you like to do for entertainment on a Saturday night. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. For a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app with code First Pitch. Terms apply. That's code First First pitch for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It really is guaranteed to give you the lowest price, so I promise you, you absolutely will not be disappointed. 
The other thing that won't disappoint you either is Locked On Sports today as we have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is great because we will keep you caught up in all things going on in sports, no matter what time zone you're in or what time of day it is. We are the only network that has this. So if you're looking to stay caught up in everything going on in sports, Locked On Sports Today is the place for you. The Boston Red Sox overall in 2024 have been a better defensive team so far than they were in 2023. Last year, the struggles were significant, especially in the infield. Kike Hernandez playing at shortstop had his mix of struggles. Then you kind of platooned a lot of guys with Pablo Reyes and Manuel Valdez, Christian Arroyo, guys who could switch around between the shortstop position and the second base position, but you didn't really have a solidified guy at either. So that alone was an issue. And as a result of that, the Red Sox were making a lot of errors defensively in those two spots in particular. Then when Trevor Story came back for the last couple months of the season from having surgery done, his arm looked very much healthy and he fixed the infield defense. They looked like a much more cohesive unit when Story came back because of the fact that, I mean, again, we know how good of a defender Trevor Story always has been, and that's part of the reason the Red Sox signed him is because of how good he is defensively. So the Red Sox defense significantly improved. They made a lot less errors once he came back than they did before that. And it was a breath of fresh air. It really was. And unfortunately, now Trevor Story has suffered an injury. He went to make what would have been a very crazy good play he dove for a ball and fell badly on his shoulder and it was really tough to watch because he walked off the field Friday night during the game and seemed unable to move his shoulder it was honestly really scary and it was just super tough to watch um so we're hoping he's okay He's waiting to get results on definitively what it is and what his timeline is, how long he's going to miss, but he doesn't seem like he's feeling too optimistic about it. And it's very unfortunate because this guy just came back and was fully healthy and was excited to have a fully healthy season in a Boston Red Sox uniform. And poor story goes and gets injured again while putting it all out there and trying to make a really nice play. It's so upsetting for him because he really is so dedicated to baseball, and it will be absolutely heartbreaking if he misses the entire season again. That would be so sad for him right when he's ready to go and he's healthy. And I truly hope that he can come back this season. The Red Sox have replacements they've been kind of having Pablo Reyes and Emmanuel Valdez platoon at second base because Von Grisham is still injured but they did call up David Hamilton in the interim while they figure out what's going on with Story he did hit his first major league home run on Sunday in the game so congratulations to Hamilton for that big accomplishment for him but he did have a defensive miscue in the game and Emmanuel Valdez has struggled defensively. Last year, he struggled a lot, and even into this season, he's made a couple errors in the infield this year so far. So if Story doesn't come back, it is time to worry about the infield defense. At the end of the day, the Red Sox do have some young players on this team that are still learning. Even Sadam Rafaela, he's made some fantastic catches out in center field, but He has made a couple bad plays too, misplayed a couple balls, and that goes to show that the Red Sox have guys on this team that are very much still learning. 
and trying to figure things out. And that all goes back to David Hamilton and Emmanuel Valdez, both guys who haven't had a ton of major league experience yet and are trying to find their way. And if Trevor Story's out for the whole season, then that's going to be a really tough pill to swallow for Red Sox fans because this infield defense is not the same without Story. He makes them look clean. He has only overthrown one ball so far this year. He just looked very good when he was out there. So I hope for a lot of different reasons that he's able to come back healthy. But the Red Sox are going to need to figure out a way to make it work. If he is unable to come back, then they're going to need guys like Valdez and Hamilton to step up defensively and work on improving a little bit in that area because the Red Sox lost a lot of games due to their defense last year. So that's something I'm looking at moving forward is if Story is unable to come back, who's going to be able to step up and be that glue to the infield defensively at the Red Sox need? Devers defensively has always struggled at third base. He's made a couple errors so far already this season. This team needs that leader in the infield, and that leader to me was Story, the veteran who has so much experience and had been out there and is a known great defender, now potentially could be gone for the season. And that's heartbreaking and disappointing. So I'm looking at guys like Valdez and guys like Hamilton and saying, you've got to step it up. And yes, the effort is definitely there. They both have put it all out there to make some very nice plays in the infield, but it's just about making the smart play, not forcing a throw if there isn't one, and just having strong baseball IQ and being aware of what's going on and making the right plays at the right time. That's something I'd like to see more of from the two of them moving forward. And the Red Sox overall were not bad defensively in this series against the Angels by any means. Very much not bad. Only a few defensive mishaps that especially on Saturday, proved to be costly when the Red Sox lost. But overall, I'm not super concerned until I have to be. I do think there's potential there, especially with Hamilton defensively, to continue to grow and develop. Valdez definitely still needs work. Reyes, I like him defensively. They're definitely going to continue to put him into games. So, those three guys collectively need to step up and be the middle infield unit that the Red Sox need. So let's just hope for one, that Trevor Story is able to come back sooner rather than later. And for two, in his absence, these guys do right by him and they just continue to learn to make the right baseball plays and they are starting to improve defensively overall because that's a storyline now to look at as we await a timeline for Trevor Story. Overall, very happy with the Red Sox series in Anaheim, though. Super impressed with the pitching once again. Tanner Houck looked fantastic again. Garrett Whitlock was not the sharpest, but managed to get out of a lot of jams, so that was nice to see. Bullpen, for the most part, did their job as well. And the offense, for the most part, came through, except for Saturday's game where they didn't have much offense at all. But overall in the series, great offensive effort, great effort on the mound, so it gives us a reason to keep the faith. As always, go Red Sox, and I will catch you on the flip side.